Hey guys, it's Charlotte back with a new video. Welcome to a practical guide to weathering, where we will look at realistically weathering a Skilltrains.com Thrall 5750 Carbon Black Hopper. My friends at Skilltrains send over this beautiful carbon black covered hopper to weather up with prototypical road grime for my latest series. I would like to personally thank Skilltrains for supporting and empowering women in model railroading. These cars are available now through Skilltrains.com and their select retailer network. I was lucky enough to have a friend gift me a secondhand airbrush setup, so that is going to be a major part in weathering this car. There are other techniques available to fade a car, but for this project, I feel that the airbrush technique will be more practical to garner a more uniform result. I will also be using powders like we have learned over the past few videos. There are some other products which I will introduce and talk about later on. Let's get right into it. All right, I'm going to start with fading the car. We're going to take our Mission Models Light Gray and 50% isopropyl alcohol and mix them to a 50 to 50 ratio. You could also use 70% or even 90% isopropyl alcohol in a pinch if you're not able to get your hands on anything else. I mix the two together using a small mixing stick for about a minute to ensure that it is thoroughly combined. You're going to want it to look like the consistency of milk. Make sure you test your airbrush on another model or something dark to ensure it has the desired effect before spraying on your project. The last thing you're going to want is to find out on your first spray that your airbrush is set to too heavy. I hold the airbrush about 6 inches away from the car while being careful not to handle the car where there are delicate details. You want to make sure that you begin and end the sweep of your spray off the car, otherwise you could end up with a heavy spot on one end. I make a few passes on each side of the car and inspect it to make sure it's all uniform. Try to make sure each sweep is at a different angle to prevent shadowing. And then be sure to hit the underside of the freight car as well. I did end up doing the roof heavier than the rest as that would be exposed to the sun the most. Fade the car to the desired level. When doing a black car, you should be careful not to overdo it as it is very easy to go too far. Not only will this process fade the car, but it will also provide a more textured surface for the powders to stick to later on. Alrighty, now that I faded the car and took the sheen down, I'm going to hit it with some weathering powders. I start off with a dark rail brown powder and work on the bottom details of the car, mainly the unloading hatches. After looking at some of the prototype pictures of these cars, it was evident that the road grime needed to be added to the lower portion and sides of the car. Thank you. 
You want to use light pressure with these brushes while applying powder to the fine details as to not break them. If I notice excess powder building up, I would lightly blow it off. After doing the hatches and side piping, I move on to the other details like the airlines and braking components. Just make sure to put an even application for the most part. Next, I will move on to the size of the car. We will be using a grimy gray powder and downward strokes with a medium sized brush. Make sure to hit all the nooks and crannies like behind the grab irons and up against the roof of the car where the side panels start.
Repeat the process on the other side. Try to be careful not to handle the car where you have already applied powders as it may leave fingerprints. Repeat this process to both car ends and don't forget to get in behind the grab irons again. I use Tester's Dual Coat Top Coat to seal the powders in after applying. Make sure you shake this product before pouring so it is properly mixed. I applied this in the same fashion as the fade, but increased the flow on the brush to get a more even coat. This is a tackier product, so you want to make sure to let it dry thoroughly before repositioning the car. Okay, moving to the top of the car, I started with the walkway. Prototype pictures revealed that the walkways on these cars tend to rust a little more heavily. I used a light rust powder to emulate this. I liberally applied the powder along the walkway, making sure to blow any excess off and using the bristles on the brush to push any stuck powder through the walkway. Repeat this process for the rest of the walkway.
Now for the roof itself, I used the grimy gray powder. I made sure to get the powder underneath the hatches, again remembering to blow away any excess. I covered the roof with an even application Based off the prototype picture, the ends of the walkway were a little bit more faded than rusty. Using the lime mortar white powder, I went back and applied this over the rust just on the ends. Again, looking at prototype pictures of the roof, I noticed that some cars loading hatches had latches that were light gray. I wanted to portray this on my model, so I opted to use an extra fine tip oil paint pen. I carefully painted the latch portion of the hatch.
Unfortunately, the tip on this paint pen was not fine enough to achieve the level of detail that I wanted, so I opted to use one of my extreme fine tip paint brushes with Mission Models light gray paint. After finishing the latches, I went back and did one more coat of the grimy gray powder on the entire roof, ensuring that the hatches were coated. I applied another dull coat off video to the car after this step. Moving back to the sides of the car, I applied a light layer of road grime just along the top and ribs of the car using the dark rail brown powder. Based off prototype pictures, these are the areas that saw the heaviest amount of road grime. Repeat the process for the other side. Again, I applied another dull coat off video after this step. I was not able to find a photo of this exact carbon black hopper, but knowing what I know, a car that has faded this severely would have the logo be faded more as well. So I masked the logo off on both sides using Tamiya 18mm masking tape. This allowed me to fade the logo without fading the car additionally.
Moving back to the spray booth, I used the same 50-50 fade mix I made earlier in the video. I didn't mask off the entire car, but I would recommend taking the extra time as to avoid overspray. Using a light spray, bathe the logo until the desired effect is reached. Going back to my Sharpie oil pen, I wanted to add a small tag to one side of the car. I found this tag on a similar carbon black car online. Before putting it on the freight car itself, I practiced the design on a piece of paper to ensure that my size and style were accurate. These paint pens are fantastic for adding small graffiti tags and scribbles. Alrighty, going back to the original truck set, I removed the wheels from the trucks and set them in a nifty tool I was given. This allows me to paint them without accidentally painting the flanges. I used Rust-Oleum Dark Brown Camo Paint. After shaking the can up, I applied a few light coats to the wheels and set them off to the side to dry. Moving on to the trucks, I used an old paintbrush handle to hold them as I painted them. This paint was not very quick to dry, so I used a blow dryer off video on low heat to speed up the process. After drying, I moved back to the wheels and applied a heavy coat of dark rust powder evenly applying it to all of the wheels. I went back over the rust with a dark rail brown powder to give it a more realistic and textured look.
On the trucks, I continued using the dark rail brown powder and made sure to evenly coat the entire truck. I went back and used that dark rust powder to accent certain parts of the truck based on the prototype picture I was referencing. Again, I applied another dull coat off video after this step. Alrighty, here we have the finished product. I'm really excited with how this car turned out. I think the main thing I got out of this project was slowing the process down and paying more attention to details. I feel like using the airbrush to fade cars in the future is going to be a great tool based on how well this car turned out. This would be a great freight car to add to any modeler's roster. It's not too difficult to weather and with a little time and effort, great results can be achieved. Again, a big thanks to my friends at Skill Trains for sending me this car and giving me the opportunity to hone my skills and the ability to create content that will hopefully be helpful for all of you watching. As always, please leave any tips and tricks in the comments, like, share, and subscribe, and I will catch you guys next time. Thanks!